<sighs> What's going on, guys? Guess I didn't know I had superpowers. Wick the goat. If you don't know me, you will. Back at it again. Got another video for y'all. No cars and friends today. Nobody wanted to be in my video. So I was getting some questions. How is it owning six, seven vehicles? And is it worth it? The pros and cons. So we're going to talk about the pros and cons. At least for me. I don't know about everybody else's experience. For my tax bracket, I can't afford seven brand new cars. So my experience is with used cars, older cars, some new-ish vehicles. And, you know. So for me at least, right? If one breaks down, obviously you got another, right? If I want to do some modifications to this. I don't have to go get a rental car for 30, 40, 50 dollars a day and I can have another vehicle. I'll be like, okay, let's put this in the shop and let's go get the other one. Works. Just swap it out. Easy. Two. You see what this is, right? So it's a six inch lifted truck. Granted, this wasn't one of my first couple of vehicles, but let's say I have something outrageous like this. Not everywhere I want to pull up to with this. If I'm going to work. This is a little obsessive. If I'm driving into a parking deck, or going deep, deep, deep in the city, like downtown, where am I gonna park this? Having multiple vehicles gives me options, like, okay, let me take the Benz out. Let me do this instead. I wanna be more low key, take the Crown Vic, and nobody's really paying attention to me. Let's say you're a little bit younger, right? You're dating a girl or whatever. Let's say you're like 18, 19, she still lives with her parents. Most of my cars are loud, but I still got some quieter cars. You could pull up in silence. This is one of those things where some days I want to be seen, some days I don't want to be seen. I want to just blend in, go to the gym, go get some groceries, whatever. Some days I want to be like, yo, look at me. See this? You feel me? Do you see this? That's just one of the things that I like doing. You know, it's, it, it's nice to be able to have some diversity in what you drive. I know some people, they like certain cars. Like some dudes only like trucks. Some dudes only like lowered cars. I'm a automotive enthusiast. Like I like all different types of things. Maybe I don't want to be sitting up high I want to sit on the ground. I want to be in a lower car today. I want to be in a regular car today. So it's nice. Another pro that I look at is let's say you have a two-door car, right? If you got a two-door car and you want to take a family trip, how are you going to do that? Nobody can fit in the back comfortably. You don't have as much trunk room and it's harder to be comfortable for a long period of time when the seat is in your knees. You feel me? So you have something like a SUV. It's like, like a Ford Expedition, a Chevy Tahoe. Escalate ESV, you know, something bigger, it's more comfortable. Now let's say, okay, I want to go to the track next weekend. Now I can go whip out the two door, go to the track, tear it up, go drift, do whatever you do. Now, oh, I need a pickup truck to move stuff. Let me get a pickup truck. Instead of renting it out for $19.99, you can have one. You can buy something that's like two, three thousand dollars. Like you could find like a 96 Tacoma for maybe like fifteen hundred dollars, keep it on the side. Insurance is maybe like $25 a month, $20 a month. I think it's worth it. At least that's what I like to do. And I like to build vehicles. So this is coming from an automotive enthusiast viewpoint, not just, you know, your run of the mill Joe. If you guys are like me, which I'm pretty sure you are, if you're watching this video, all these things are probably clicking like, ah, oh, this kind of makes sense, right? So those are the things. I mean, there's not really much other than that for me that I think it's worth it. I just like to switch cars a lot. All my different vehicles can do something else. I got a motorcycle, so when my boy's like, hey, let's go ride on the bikes, man, let's, you can hop in and do that. Truck friends, can, I can hang out with them. Car friends, I can hang out with them, you know? So it's nice to be able to have a variety and not have to compensate for only having one vehicle, you know? Let's get to the cons. The cons of owning like six, seven vehicles. If you guys see my previous video, I told you how I gradually got more vehicles. Yes, I know people are in the comments like, oh, this is a liability. How is owning seven liabilities a good thing and this and that. I'm not saying it's good. I never said it was great to do that. But for me, this is my hobby. I just happen to have an expensive ass hobby. I like collecting cars. I like building cars. I like making them mine, making them unique. That's just what I do. So I'm just on YouTube with it now because I'm like, if I'm going to do it, I might as well do it all the way and possibly get paid for it and show the world. Sometimes it sucks. I've had times back then when I only had three cars and all three of them had problems. One needs brakes, one needs tires, one needs catalytic converter. And you're like, oh my God, the world is ending because you're gonna have to dish out or just get rid of them. The 4Runner, I threw so much money into that car. It's, it's ridiculous. And when it comes to money, like obviously it's not a great choice. It's not something that you can just do. Things are gonna break, especially when you deal with older vehicles 
they break down like every other three months. Like if it's not one thing, it's another. If it's not a ball joint, then you need new rotors. If it's not new rotors, now you need a head gasket. If it's not that, your headlights went out and wiring issues and you know, like my AMG has been sitting down for a whole year, a whole 365 for a wiring harness. And after it's all said and done, I put a computer in there because we were still troubleshooting the problem. Front Sam, wiring harness. So the total bill is going to be like seven grand. Is that realistic for everybody? No. And I'm still paying a car note on this and I still have five other vehicles I maintain. That money aspect is the number one thing I will tell you, like definitely the number one thing that's going to really hurt. As of right now, I have two investment properties. I have my mom's house that I'm there every now and then. And I have my apartment that I live in. Right. So that's enough space for me to kind of spread out the number of cars that I have. If you live at a regular house and you have seven cars outside, that's a little obsessive if you ask me. Granted, I don't drive on my vehicles like I told y'all. I still have to find a place to park them or you're going to have to pay for storage. Like I'm not Jay Leno yet. I'm working on it, but you still got to have spaces to park all these vehicles. If I was at my apartment complex, they'd probably kick me out if I had all these cars lined up plus my work car and my motorcycle. I'd be taking up like half a level of space on the parking deck. Right. And this thing doesn't even fit in the parking deck. So you got to think about space, money. Another thing you got to think about, I don't know how your state works, but every year you have to renew your tags and do emissions. You know, diesel is emission exempt and my motorcycle is emission exempt, but that leaves six other cars that I have to go get registration for every year. If you got a custom tag, like custom tags in Georgia are, I think $90 a year, you pay to renew it, plus the $20 for the um, emissions. So you're looking at like $110 per vehicle to get registration if you got custom plates and it without custom plates, you know, you're probably looking around maybe like $45, $50 per vehicle. But either way, the more vehicles, the more expensive. It comes back to money, but it's still a hassle of having to do this with every car. So I got to drive one, go back, get another one, go back to the emission shop, go back to another one, go back to the emission shop. Like it's a hassle. It's, it's very annoying. So when you think about the tediousness of doing that, even just with the maintenance itself. Like sometimes I got to call somebody, hey bro, can you come pick me up and bring me across town? Let me go get the other car. And like, it's, it's, it's annoying. It's nice to flex and be like, yeah, seven cars or whatever, blah, blah. But still at the end of the day, it's a tedious thing. Even without the money, it's still annoying having to do so much to maintain and move your cars around and take care of them, wash them. It, it, it takes a lot of time. This is very time consuming. So when you when you feel like, hey, listen, I want to have this and this and this, just know it costs money, it costs time, and it's not going to be easy. This is my passion and this is what I love. So for me, it makes sense. For the average person, I would definitely not tell you, like, don't be an automotive enthusiast. It's expensive and it, it hurts your pockets, especially, like I said, having multiple vehicles. Like, imagine if I blew a tire in this thing. One tire is $600, bro, and I have to tow it. There is no changing those tires on 26 inch rims bro like there's no putting a spare on so you got to tow this now nah, i gotta pay for the tow pay for the tow is like 300 to tow it all the way to my shop and nobody wants to even mount 26s so you got to pay them 500 per labor then i got to uber back go get another car like it's it sucks sometimes i ain't gonna lie to you i'm not gonna tell you feed you a lie and tell you oh my god it's the best thing ever but like i said it works for me Hopefully you learn something. Hopefully you feel like, hey, let me not jump into three, four, five different cars. Maybe it's not for me. You don't want to do stuff just to flex and just to be like, hey, listen, I got this. And you still got to pay your bills. That rent is still due. That mortgage is still due. Credit cards is still due. Your monthly payments are still due, even if it's broken down. Remember that. So you got whatever subscriptions. Just, just remember that this is not a game. And this is real life, even though it looks nice on TV, your favorite YouTuber, IG model or whoever you follow makes it look like it's easy. Just know that it takes time to get good at this. And then once you do get these type of vehicles, another piece of advice I give you, once you get more high end vehicles and a higher number of vehicles, get in good with a mechanic, get in good with somebody that does towing. Right. So that you can kind of save a little bit 
and not be necessarily paying these premiums that these once in a blue moon customers pay. Like I have guys that work on my car, work on my truck, and I have a specific tow guy and I see them, even with Sid here behind the camera, I can pay like a membership fee, right? They will give me a little bit more leeway because they know I'm gonna use them more often than the regular person. So if you come to me one time, I'm gonna charge you 300, but if you come to me every other month, I'll be like, all right, bro, I got you for 200. So just make those relationships and don't forget, like having a bunch of cars is cool, but sometimes it sucks. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But if you work on cars, it may be the right thing. I don't even work on any cars. I, like I said, I used to try to, but I don't have the time for it anymore. And I lost the love of actually getting in the engine and getting in and doing stuff myself. I'd rather pay somebody to do the hard work. It's what I work hard for, so feel me? But like I said, it's week to go, baby. If you don't know me, you will. And we'll be back with another one very soon. Next thing we're probably gonna do is cars with friends. I'm gonna introduce you to my tow guy who also has a very cool car. And um, we'll just go from there. So y'all stay safe out here. Keep grinding, keep hustling, never stop. All your dreams are achievable. Don't forget that. All right.